What is FreePBX? Uh, I'm just going to go through this pretty quick because I'm assuming a lot of you guys already know what FreePBX is, maybe. So uh, we say it's freedom to choose, uh, to choose what you want. You can add, remove modules, different feature sets. It doesn't all come included. Um, as in, like, you can make the PBX what you want it to be based off of asterisk, right? Um, it's more than a config generator, we say, because although it does generate configs, it also provides backend API access. Um, there's applications that run on it. Obviously, Zulu is one of our commercial products that runs on it um, that gives you access to a mobile client and a desktop client, and that's all built on top of FreePBX, which makes it more than a config generator. Um, 81 standard open source modules. You can actually see this source code on github.com freepbx. Uh, that's mirrored from our own Git server, which is git.freepbx.org. Uh, there's only 30 commercial modules. Um, again, like I said earlier, um, freepbx is a modular system. There's about 128 modules altogether and more added every year. Uh, there's 60 contributed open source modules. That means modules that people in the community have built up over the years and then contributed, but they no longer work on. So you can actually see the source code of all those modules there if you ever wanted to go look at those. Um, globally deployed around the world, multiple languages. We have a weblate system, which what that is is online that allows people to translate FreePBX into their desired language, it builds the files out, and puts it into FreePBX. So we're able to say it's globally deployed around the world because a lot of it's actually already translated in Spanish. I believe German's translated fully. I'd have to go look at the full list. But there's a lot of languages in there. And you can easily go add one uh, for free. You just have to sign a CLA, which is a contributor license agreement with Sangoma. And you can actually translate it yourself. So where did it come from? If you guys want, ever want to know the history of AMP portal, if you've ever used that CLI command, that stands for Asterisk Management Portal. Uh, that was the original name of FreePBX, was AMP. Um, and in 2004 is when it was created. The web was much different back then. They call it the dawn of Facebook. That's when Facebook was officially launched. Uh, if you want to know how different it was, these are some quick stats I pulled up that I used in another presentation earlier. Um, I mean, Time Magazine was recommending Friendster.com as the website of the year. We all know how that went. Um, some 50 million sites then. Now we have 1.8 billion. <clears throat> I actually looked up the 1.8 billion just last week to get, make sure that was pretty accurate. So. Uh, FreePBX itself is primarily GPL. Uh, if you guys don't know about open source, there's licensing to all open source projects. Each license has a different set of terms that go under it, right? FreePBX is primarily GPL. It started off as GPL v2, which is actually the same um, licensing as asterisk. Um, now parts of it are v3, and other parts of new modules are APL g3, which just gives us more licensing flexibility in cloud environments. That's why we use a day GPL. Um, if you want to know the history of GPL, released in 1991, version 2, so I mean it has a long history. Version 3 is 2007. Um, the modular design, because it uses GPL, actually allows you to use other licenses, so other modules could be MIT or MPL. As long as they're compatible with GPL, you can use those licenses. Which means you could get a module from somewhere else for free PBX, and the code itself doesn't have to be licensed GPL, right? And licensing has nothing to do with money. It's all about protecting your own work. That's why people license code online. Um, here's a little graphic, which is a little hard to see. You probably should have made it bigger. But um, these are some quick stats right here. I'll go over this a little bit later as I have it in more depth and bigger. Um, we pulled this from a website called uh, it's Black Duck Open Hub. Um, what it does is it, you can put an open source project in there, and it will aggregate stats about that project. That's where we came up with that. <clears throat> um, you can see over 248 contributors. This is since 2004, right? 1.3 million lines of code. They're saying it would take one developer 330, 377 years of effort to build FreePBX, um, right? 29,000 community, what is that? Community posts per year, which comes from our forms system. <clears throat> um, based on statistics we have, our install base is about 3 million systems in production that are actively running. Tens of thousands of new systems every month, right? Explosive web growth traffic resulting in a large multinational community to collaborate with. That's also with help of Sangoma Technologies. Sangoma Technologies is a global company, right? We have offices all over the world. That's helped uh, FreePBX to expand globally, which is really great. Uh, one of the longest running still active GUIs. Uh, just to give a shout out, Waz Wazo is the other long standing uh, asterisk GUI that's out there. I believe that they were created in about 2006 or 7. 
Uh, again, back to Black Duck, right? <clears throat> These are the stats uh, broken up. I just bro broke it up. I just made it a little bit bigger so you could see it. 38,000 commits, 250 contributors. I, only, I updated this last week, so two more contributors came on to the project. Uh, very active, very high activity means that's the commit activity. So based on that, FreePBX has commits about, I don't know, it's like once or twice or three times a day, just depending, right? Because the way it works is a Git flow model. So people commit into what are called branches, then the branches make their way into releases, and then the releases are published, right? And that's all based off of the published releases, the stats. The development team for FreePBX is currently, it's a full-time development team sp staffed, sponsored by Sangoma Technologies. Um, there's also the community that contributes modules. Like I said, contributed um, modules. They also uh, push forward pull requests, which are a way to bring patches and fixes to FreePBX. So not only do we have the full-time staff at Sangoma, we also have community members that use FreePBX and submit code. And any of you could do that as well. Uh, FreePBX, again, what is it, right? So there's an administration interface, queues, conferences, extensions, parking, paging, um, you name it. That's all in there, voicemail. All those things, this is all free, by the way, just in the product you can download right now and use. Uh, we have a user interface, which is also free. Uh, it's a dashboard layout, which means that you can drag and drop and add widgets and expand them and then add another dashboard in to have multiple dashboards and multiple widgets. And um, there's some commercial aspects to that, just as there are to this. But it, the base of this starts off, it's all free, right? So you just download free PBX and you can do, you can see call monitoring, you can do turn off and on, uh, call forwarding, call history, recordings, all of that's baked in there free, right? On top of that, we have our Zulu, which is our commercial product. And it is, um, <clears throat> we have our mobile app that works through Zulu, which connects to FreePBX, and also our desktop client, which also connects through FreePBX. And that's a screenshot of the desktop client. FreePBX itself supports these asterisk versions as of right now. FreePBX 13 supports asterisk 11 still, which is already uh, end of life. Uh, FreePBX 15 supports 13, technically 14, 15, and 16 of asterisk. <clears throat> um, asterisk Digium itself does not recommend using free P or asterisk 14, so that's why I don't have it listed there. Um, but there you go. So FreePBX 13 also actually supports asterisk 16. Uh, like I said, vibrant community, right? These are the stats from our uh, community. And those are our two uh, links, if you ever want to write those down, to be able to report issues or join our community, which has tons of helpful resources, uh, posts, and everything. Um, <clears throat> you see how active it is. I mean, page views just that day was 65,000 page views. Um, so anyways, where did free PBX come from? All right, I already talked about AMP, AMP portal, right? Uh, Asterisk was first released in December of 1999, and those are some old screenshots of some dial plan. Although it's using commas, so I don't think it's that old. It's probably 1.6, because uh, before 1.6, instead of commas between everything, it was actually uh, pipes. So this is what FreePBX looked like when it was first released. Like I said, AMP, right? Asterisk Management Portal. Um, at the time, Digium did not like that they were using the name asterisk in the title of this product that had nothing to do with Digium. So the name had to change to FreePBX. So that's where it came from, AMP to FreePBX. The CLI commands were actually AMP portal, and that's why it stayed that way, right? But the front end changed to being FreePBX. In 2007 is the first time that they did a big uh, GUI change. You can see how AMP and FreePBX in this image, they still look similar. When you move from there to here, when you move from FreePBX, this version, to the next version, uh, the changes start getting more drastic, right? There's like a color scheme to it and everything starts to fill out the screen more, right? In 2012, we made another change to the GUI, which it's hard to see, but what happened here is that, there's my mouse, um, everything was to the side, and then it moved to a top navigation, so they dropped down, right? But all of this in here stayed the same. I just came over here. And then in 2012, actually this is 2015, but that's okay, I'll do this. Um, <clears throat> we actually moved from, where's my mouse? It being like this over here, right, with the top navigation up here, with the navigation still top up here, but it fills more, like it fills the screen more, right? 
Uh, we did this because if you actually load up free PBX now on a mobile device, it will scale. It's all about responsiveness. Uh, before, it wasn't responsive. So this is not responsive, and this is, and that's why we did that. Uh, the user interface for FreePBX, first release in, uh, in about FreePBX 2.4, from what I can tell, uh, it was called ARI. Again, another naming conflict that's gonna come up, right, because now Asterisk has ARI. Uh, they called it the Asterisk Recording Interface at that time. Uh, that's what it looked like. You could play back files, voicemails, um, you name it, back in version 2.4 of FreePBX, which was probably around 2. Point, or sorry, 2006 or so. Um, again, the web is different now, right? So back then, if you wanted to listen to a voicemail, it would download to your computer and you'd have to play it back. Or it'd try to load up QuickTime, which was awful on your computer back then, right? So we moved forward, and um, in 2014, we started work on a redesigned ARI, which we called UCP, which actually utilized uh, HTML5 technology, which all that means is that we transcode, change the files Asterisk gives us for voicemail and recordings, and you can just play it back on your browser, right? Because it's all supported these days to play audio directly on your browser without needing things like QuickTime loaded on your computer, right? And then again, I showed you this earlier, in June 2017, we redesigned uh, UCP again to use the dashboard layout and widgets that are resizable and you can move them around, right? 2018, uh, we wanna get working on this feature request that everybody has requested, which is having uh, default templates for dashboards and sharing default dashboards because you go in right now <clears throat> as a user and you're like, I don't know what I'm doing, right? So if an administrator sets up a dashboard, you can share it with the users and then they have a base starting place, okay? Uh, here's the recent release history if you wanted to know. Uh, October 2018, that's this month, we released Aster, or sorry, FreePBX 15. Uh, a year ago, what is that, like a year and four months ago, we released um, Aster, or sorry, FreePBX 14, geez. And then before that, it's like a two year difference, right, between 14 and 13 and then a one year difference between 13 and 12, and then a one year difference between 12 and 211. So what did we learn with FreePBX 14 when we worked on it? I actually went over this last year, but I wanted to reiterate. Um, FreePBX 14 took almost two years to come to market. We wanted to try to get faster with our release cycles. Um, we wanted to try to get under six months, six months to a year. Um, we had a lot of feature creep in FreePBX 14. FreePBX 14 was also tied to our distro, which we call Sangoma 7 distro, which is actually based off of Red Hat, or sorry, CentOS 7, which is actually based off of Red Hat 7, right? That moved all the libraries up. It was this massive transition to go from uh, CentOS 6.5 or 6.6 to 7. Um, so that's why it took so long. Everything was all tied together. Like I said, this is what I wrote last year. Future FreePBX versions will go back to being shorter releases. So a year later, here we are, right? And I wanted to be quicker than a year. It still took us about a year. Less than last time, like I said, less than how long it took from, to go from 13 to 14, or from 12 to 13, right? But there's still feature creep. Um, the difficulty of our features that we tried to add that I'll talk about in a few minutes here in 15 was uh, for backup and restore redux, redoing it, reworking it, we had to go touch all 120 modules that exist in FreePBX. Uh, that is time consuming because you have to open up every single one and add new functionality to it, right? The same with the GraphQL and REST API functionality we added to FreePBX. You have to go into every module and touch it. So we're still shooting for future FreePBX versions to going back to being shorter releases. Uh, we just have to step away from these huge features that we present ourselves, right? That we get ourselves into. So like I said, adjusting priorities. Um, what I want to show next is um, if you report an issue to the issue tracker, over time, how many of those issues are actually triaged and fixed? And triage just means it's assigned to someone and that person works on it and then it's fixed, right? So from 2016 to 2017, we've got 79.08% of all open bug reports were fixed within the year, right? So they were opened in that year and they were fixed within that year frame, that time frame, right? Um, you can see that's dropped a little bit to 76%. Um, but in the last six months, we've still kept it at 76%. So we wanna actually increase this to be more, because I think it should be about 80 to 85% of us fixing issues within a year, right? That's really important. Um, what is good is that from 2016 to 2017, you can see we resolved 73% of all free PBX issues, 
And in the last six months, we actually uh, fixed 74% of all issues, which is good. That's an increase, right? So what's in free PBX 15? Uh, we're doing the backup and restore redo, rework, redux, whatever you want to call that, right? We reworked backup and restore. The problem with FreePBX 14 and lower in backup and restore is if you did a backup on FreePBX 12 and then you tried to restore it on FreePBX 14, your system would blow up, right? It would still be usable, but things would break. That's because you're bringing old PHP code around. MySQL databases don't match. It just doesn't work, right? So what we did in 15 was... We actually broke it out between each module. So you can bring a backup from 12 into 15, and it will work, because each module takes care of its own backup and restore methods separately. So instead of us trying to do this base backup and restore of the whole thing as one object and then just dumping it in there, each module can figure out what it needs to do, right? And we even have methods that we call legacy backup restore, legacy restore in FreePBX 15 in each module that can take care of any old code that it finds. So as we find bugs, like somebody tries to restore from 12 to 15, instead of it being we can't do that, it's now gonna be let's figure it out from your backup file and get it to work, right? Um, if you wanna know more about it, you can go to that crazy, that's a short link. I don't really think it's that short, but there you go. Um, you can go there, there's more information. But wiki.freepbx.org has a ton of information, and you could just search backup and restore and find information about 15, about backup and restore in 15. The other thing we introduced is the file store module. So this is another open source module. This links directly into backup and restore, but what we want to do is actually bring that into other functionality in FreePBX. For backup and restore, what it allows you to do is make up a backup and restore to Dropbox, which is new, right? SSH, S3, local storage, FTP, and email. Um, in the future, it would be putting things like Fax Pro in there or other modules. Uh, whatever modules can like save to disk, that's what we would put in there. That's our plan in the future. FreePBX 15, we also added an API. Uh, this allows for us to modify and see data remotely. It uses OAuth 2 uh, developer technology, but um, what that allows you to do is it's an authentication method. Um, there's different grant types, and if you look it up, you can find out more information about OAuth 2. It's pretty standard. Facebook uses it, Amazon uses it, a ton of people use it. Um, like I said, it's permissionable, so per app, each module actually declares what's called a scope. So if you wanted to write an app that connects to FreePBX, and you just want it to actually talk to the core module to add an extension, you can actually set the permissions that fine-grained, right? Um, what is GraphQL? I talked about it last year. Um, here's a quick rundown of it. Um, if I have time, I might be able to bring it up. Um, but basically, it allows you to, in a normal REST API, you might need five different things, right? You want to know how many extensions there are. You want to know if voicemail is enabled to those extensions, right? To do that normally, in a REST API world, because FreePBX is modular, you'd have to first query the extensions, then you'd have to query voicemail. In GraphQL, it's all one query. So you query, you ask for extensions, and in, each, in the extensions, you ask for the voicemail. And what happens is in FreePBX, the voicemail actually talks to GraphQL at the same time that extensions do, so you get all that at one time. So it's all about asking for data at one time and getting a response back at one time instead of calling out multiple times to different APIs. Allows you to better integrate FreePBX into your workflow, um, and the docu there's um, self-documenting, so GraphQL is also self-documenting. Again, more developer stuff that we added for FreePBX. You can write and test queries, write, test, and execute queries inside of FreePBX. And then on top of that, we just added a basic RESTful a API as well. So if you didn't want to use GraphQL, you could use the REST API. Um, we don't actually have a lot of functionality in there but developers could come along, community could come along and add that functionality in. It's the same logic, it's scope based, it's OAuth 2 based, right? So it's the same way that uh, GraphQL works. You can find out more information on our wiki as well, right? So summary of FreePBX 15, right? So, or FreePBX in itself. Um, today FreePBX is a major presence. Syngoma Technologies is still completely behind the project. Full-time developers, along with community uh, management as well, community resources. Dozens of geographically dispersed replicated servers. Um, what I mean by that is, uh, I mean, one of our T guys is right here, Scott, um, but we have servers in the UK, we have servers in um, 
Milwaukee, we have servers in Phoenix, so they're all over the place. That's just our mirror infrastructure for FreePBX itself. Uh, we have certification programs, a fully dedicated ecosystem. You can go to portal.sangoma.net to learn more about that. Uh, we also have professional training programs. We even have free training programs, which is on our university, which I don't know the link offhand. Do you know that, Brian? Training.sangoma.com. You can actually learn about FreePBX for free. There's a whole certification program there for free. Training.sangoma.com. Um, if you guys didn't know, we also added all the Digium phones are now free in Endpoint Manager. So if you guys download FreePBX right now, you have Digium phones, you can get the Endpoint Manager without paying anything for it, and it will configure Digium phones. It will also configure Sangoma phones, which you might have already known that. Um, I also want to demo one thing here. I did a talk earlier on um, how you can utilize ARI and speech-to-text technologies in uh, FreePBX. What time is it, 2.57? I don't even know when I'm supposed to be done with this, so. What I want to do here is just demo how powerful FreePBX is. So what I did was, earlier I wrote a little app um, in Amazon Lex, which I don't know if you guys know what that is. Amazon has a whole suite of services, right? Amazon Web Services, it's huge, right? Amazon Lex is like their chatbot type program. Uh, it also utilizes Amazon Polly, which is a text-to-speech program. So this whole app uses um, speech-to-text and then text-to-speech, and it's a bot engine. So what I did was I wrote up a little app that actually utilizes that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mirror my screen back over here so we can see this. I'm going to try to live demo this thing that's connected directly to FreePBX. It uses FreePBX extensions. Um, and actually, FreePBX dial plan. So let me try to bring that up and show you guys. <clears throat> so if I go to, I want to go to here, this one. So this is all FreePBX, right? Uh, this is what I call a stasis app, right? So it's just connecting to Amazon Lex. Um, if I come over here. And then just show you guys this really quick. <clears throat> so this is a little app that I wrote uh, that just connects to Amazon Lex. And um, what it's, what it's going to do is it's, I'm going to call in. It's going to beep. I'm going to tell it um, some, I'm going to ask it some information about a movie. Um, I'm going to say, tell me about like the Matrix, right? And then it's going to come back and say, what do you want to know? Year, plot, all? And I'm going to say plot, and it's going to respond with the plot of that movie, right? But again, what I did here was using just free PBX, I was actually able to code this thing, which is only about 172 lines. So let's get it started. And this is all over asterisk. So we'll do that. Come over here. Connect back into asterisk as well here. And uh, yeah, tell me about the matrix. What information are you looking for? Year, plot, all? Year. What information are Oops, you looking for? I didn't respond for? in time. Year, plot, all? Year. The matrix released in March 30th, 1999. So what I can do here is I can actually go back and I can call it again and then have it tell me about like the movie Coco but the plot. So actually let me close this because it's going to get confused on that. <clears throat> and again, like I said, this is all communicating through asterisk. So I'll come back over here. I'm going to call in. Tell me about Coco. What information are you looking for? Year, plot, all? Plot. Plot of Coco is, despite his family's baffling generations old ban on music, Miguel dreams of becoming an accomplished musician like his idol, Ernesto de la Cruz. Desperate to prove his talent, Miguel finds himself in the stunning and colorful 
But anyways, you guys get that. So that's actually all through FreePBX, right? Uh, it's using an ARI module that we built and put online. Well, not an ARI module, but it's a Node.js library that we actually released online as open source. If I go to npmjs.com and I actually just search FreePBX, it will be in there. And that's all open source. Um, there it is. So that just allowed me to connect over FreePBX's API. And then using ARI, which you guys might have heard about in Asterisk, I'm able to take the audio, send it to Amazon Lex. Amazon Lex does all the processing, sends back conversational dialogue to me as the end user, and I'm able to talk back and forth to it, right? Through Asterisk open source, FreePBX open source. And um, right now, Amazon Lex, you, if you do a certain amount, under, like under 10,000 requests, it's free. So you could actually try it out without paying anything. I think I'm still under free, even though I did all this development. It hasn't been that many requests. So you can go right now and, and demo it out. And uh, this movie application is also online. Uh, it's an application they designed. I just linked it all into Asterisk and FreePBX. So I just wanted to show that because it shows off the power of FreePBX. And uh, let me come over here, bring this back full screen. OK, good. So FreePBX 16, looking ahead, right? Um, I don't actually have anything in the slide yet, because what I wanted to show you guys is recently, in about January, Brian, who also works for Sangum over there, he asked a question in our community forums, what would you like to see in free PBX um, 15, right? These are the feature requests we got. So one of the number one things we want to work on in actual, and I can't use this command here, one of the number one things we want to work on in free PBX uh, 16 is uh, the ability to do the UCP multiple dashboard widgets, right? Um, on top of that, we have a huge list of things that we got from the community, but I'd also like to take this opportunity to ask you guys what you would actually want to see, right? If you didn't get to participate in this form thread, which was on our community.freepbx.org, what you guys want to see. So I'm actually going to go into question mode right now and write into this list, and then we save this list and we send it back out in an email to Sangoma. So, anyone? I don't even see, I don't know if there's a mic around or not. Oh, wait, James, there's a, or, there's a mic right here. <clears throat> Checking. Do you have any plans to introduce any kind of operator panel dashboard. I mean, it seemed like that's where it was going with UCP being modular, that we'd be able to flip to a new tab that was my you know, status mm -hmm. of other users, transfer capability. I mean, Flash Operator Panel 2 is great, I guess, but it's just buggy to have people go to different websites, multiple logins. Any plans for that kind of thing? Uh, there are plans for it. Um, you're right, UCP was originally designed to be that. Uh, what's probably going to happen, and I can't say for certain or not that this will happen this way, it will be in Zulu. Um, and it'll be part of Zulu, right? It'll be another tab in the desktop, so it gives you a disconnected view, so you're not always in a browser. You're in a different application, right? I don't know if Brian wants to speak any more on that. No? Okay. But yes. I think that's even in here, but I'm going to type it in anyways. But yes, the, the goal is to be able to do our own operator panel, yes. And you're right, UCP was going to be that. It might still be. Um, we might actually put it in UCP, or it most likely will be in Zulu. OK, second, yes. <laughs> Anyone else? <clears throat> oh, for operator panel, too? OK. So everybody wants an operator panel. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, he has another question over there. How about video conferencing? Video conferencing is, is on its way for uh, in Zulu. Um, that's not to say that FreePBX itself won't have some open source way to do SFU, which is the supported video conferencing method of Asterisk. I just don't know what that would be at this point, but in Zulu, it's being actively developed as of this moment. And Brian's going to add to that. If you guys don't know, Brian's my boss. Um, he's the VP of Software <laughs> Engineering at Sangoma. So, so I'll add to that as well. Um, if you guys haven't played with our Zulu um, desktop application, um, in, in the current release, screen sharing's in beta. Um, we're reworking some things there. That's really the first piece um, to, to video conferencing is, is really once we get the video moving. Um, so, so it is something that's on the roadmap. It is something that we're looking at. It's just not there yet. 
Um, but, but it is something that we're thinking about, and I know that's something that you guys want. Yeah, one-to-one -one screen sharing and video conferencing. It's all together is what we're looking at. Are there plans for a single Elmo phone that would support that? that? I mean, I would ask that question in the next conference after this. <laughs> Because that all in, like hinges on into you know uh, Sangoma phones and the Digium phones and where the architecture is going to move on that forward, right? Questions? Oh, right there. Oh, I put that in there. I'll, I'll answer that in a second. I thought I put it in there, but I didn't. Uh, yes. And the counts you can add one more. Like I'm interested in the. Oh, on the counter. which one? Uh, operator panel. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll um, put that in. My question is not regarding this, but the, the application, the Amazon, uh, the movie application. Is there any other interesting application uh, on uh, Amazon that we can test? Um, so the Amazon Lex thing, right? I actually copied that from one of their examples. You can build your own on there. They uh, support. Uh, it's called Lambda functions, which means you build your own like code in there using Node.js. You don't have to do it that way. You can send it to your server. They have tons of chatbot templates. That was just a chatbot, right? And I can go in there and change all the dialogue so that instead of it asking me about movies, I could have it go search Wikipedia instead. Or I could have it go query a customer database, right? Like when I call my healthcare company, it's like a, an automated system that tries to direct me to the right person without making me go to you know, an actual agent, which is kind of annoying, right? We push zero to get past that. But, um, you know, you could have that, that same system, Amazon Lex, could be used in that format to query your database or your customers or bring up a ticket or whatever, right? It's really powerful, Amazon Lex. Um, there's plenty of other ones out there. Google has a similar service. Microsoft has a similar service. Facebook has a similar service. Yeah. And somebody asked down here how many developers we actually have at Sangoma working on uh, free PBX. It's about seven, I think. Yeah, seven. People move in and out, not of the company, but of the projects, right? So it's that right now, I have seven people. But that's not to say in six months, I won't have four people or I won't have 10 people, right? Because everybody moves around the company, which is a good thing. Everybody kind of learns how everything works in Sangoma. Any other questions? And that's also up, by the way. There's seven people is the highest free PBX has ever had of full-time developers paid by Sangoma, right? Uh, before Sangoma, it was like four. Before that, it was three. Before that, it was two. I mean, you know, so it's just gradually increased. Sangoma is putting more money, more resources into free PBX. Questions? Oh, like SBC configuration? We've talked about that. We have a Vega module that configures the Vega stuff. Um, we've talked about the SBC module configuration. That could happen. I'll put that in here, because that's different than the, because the Vega module itself isn't actually point of, part of Endpoint Manager. It's like a separate thing. But we've definitely talked about that many times. Anything else? Any other questions? General questions about the project? Right over here, James. Brian, what time does the next one start? 3.20? Five minutes, all right. <laughs> Hold on, he's gonna go right there. What about like RMS and remote monitoring for different free PBX Yeah, systems? you know, we've gone through a few different implementations of that and they didn't pan out for us. Um, I don't know where we're headed on that right now. As you know, there was MM3 maybe, or M3, which was multi-machine management. Uh, that didn't pan out for us. RMS didn't pan out. We were doing a free trial of that as well. Brian, do you wanna speak on that? Right, yeah. It just didn't, what, what ended up happening was it didn't play out the way we wanted it to. And I'm not saying like in a customer way, but also in the resources and the coding and just everything in the ecosystem surrounding those management things. In this list, people have brought it up. So I think further down, there's something about management. Um, so it is on our radar still. We're just trying to figure out the best way to do it. Yes. I just had to vote for a multi-tenant. Vote <laughs> for multi-tenant, okay. All right, well, um, if there's no more questions, I'm gonna let them set up for the next big thing, which is in four minutes here, which is the Ask Me Anything conference, group, panel, discussion, whatever you wanna call that. So, thank you guys.